Accessibility at McGill. Hello, my name is Stephanie Trippier and I'm a doctoral student at the McGill's Faculty of Law. The city has done a lot of construction projects while I've been at McGill and the city does not train, does not require training of construction crews that it contracts with to deal with people with disabilities. So it's not just someone who's a wheelchair user who's going to have a problem if they dig up the road, but there are many cases in Montreal, people with visual impairments falling into holes, like literally. It's so dangerous for people with disabilities in the construction sites because training is so poor. And so that's been a huge problem because my access to the law school, my access to the clinic for health services, my access to the graduate student building where a lot of events take place has all been compromised. Uh, during last year, so 2017, 2018, I was the uh, equity commissioner uh, for PGSS. So Thompson House is basically a building for graduate students. It's designed to foster student collaboration, uh, to foster social life among graduate students. They don't really have an accessible entrance. There's a side door, but there's no button um, access, so they can't actually open the heavy doors. So you have to wait for someone to come in, and then if, and then if they finally make it in, they're at the basement, and the actual elevator that goes up to the other floors is actually not fill it, fitted for a, a wheelchair, so. My name is Yolanda Munoz, uh, and I am, uh, course lecturer of the course Gender and Disability for the Institute for Gender, Sexuality and, and Feminist Studies. Within the university, it's very difficult for me as a wheelchair user to find a place mm -hmm. outside of the realm of being a course lecturer. There are, there are things that are missing and that we just need to, uh, to reconsider. McGill buildings with no accessible elevator or bathroom. Thompson House. Dawson Hall, Hosmer Annex, McIntyre Medical Building, 3438 McTavish, Lady Meredith House, 3465 Peel, Red Path Hall, 550 Sherbrooke Street, Bishop Mountain Hall, 3550 University Street. My name is Terry Phillips. I'm the Director of the Office for Students with Disabilities at McGill, um, and we are part of Student Services um, as, a, as the larger parent unit. I think that one of the, the biggest kind of pain points or points of friction around accessibility um, that we often hear about is around the physical access piece. So we exist on a very old campus in the middle of a very large city on a hill. That inherently creates um, accessibility challenges. Um, that being said, um, you know, it's, it's difficult and it takes time and a significant amount of money to retrofit 200 year old buildings. So saying that the reason that, you know, I can't get into most buildings in Montreal is, oh, it's just because they're old, is saying that you want to continue that exclusion. And so it's actually offensive to me to make that argument because you're saying we should continue a society where disabled people don't get to participate in public life. The first thing McGill could do to address the issues of accessibility is to boycott all spaces that are inaccessible and no longer use them for anything except professors' offices or meeting rooms that are for events that are not open to the public or are not for students regularly to use. If you are organizing an event and that event is, in, uh, in, uh, is organized in a place that is not accessible, you, uh, uh, and there is someone who wants to attend and who has a disability, you have to change the venue, period. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you are discriminating. An X on this map marks a McGill building that lacks an accessible entrance, elevator, or bathroom. McGill prides itself on being a top school in Canada and internationally. It was named, the law school is named 14th worldwide. So just exclude people with disabilities from getting the best education and saying, oh, you have to pick a different school because of your disability is wrong. And it excludes people who are bright and should be here and participating um, from being at this institution simply because they're saying, oh, we have all these historical buildings. So sorry, you're not allowed here. Accessibility should not be optional. Accessibility needs to be central. Otherwise, it is 
completely impossible to talk about social justice and human rights because you are just not being coherent.